So India Stack is a collection of things. Those things are public infrastructure. So very often we call it digital public infrastructure. And they mediate the flow of people, flow of money, and flow of information inside India. And uh, so flow of people is mediated through a digital identity, uh, and that's called Aadhaar, and it has spin-offs. So you can do EKYC, you know, know your customer very easily using that system. Uh, you can do e-signatures very easily using that system uh, and things like that. And they all help you navigate the real world because the other side knows who you are, right? You can prove that to anybody in India saying, I am indeed Sharad, and uh, they'll know that for sure. It's designed in such a way that it doesn't change the balance of power between the citizen and the stage, state. The second piece is flow of money. So India was the first country to introduce a public utility for digital payments, and that's called UPI, Unified Payment Interface. And, uh, and that's kind of taken off uh, like a rocket ship today. Over 50% of world's digital payments are done in India through UPI. So that's become a big system. And, uh, and you would find that a street vendor uh, often collects money using digital payments. And why? Because when you pay, let's say, 100 rupees, all 100 rupees go to that vendor. So the vendor doesn't mind collecting digitally. Uh, if you were to pay that on a credit card or a debit card, then you know, they would get 99 rupees or 98 rupees. So, so UPIA is different in that way. Uh, and uh, it pays for itself because value-added services are charged. So it's an efficient system. So just by charging for value-added services, you can keep the base system free for everybody else. And the third part of it is flow of personal information and also aggregate data sets. So the personal information is that, you know, uh, you know, my health data is with a hospital on one side and with a lab on the other. Can I pull all this together and give a copy of that to my doctor because I want a second opinion, you know, from that doctor? So that's very easy to do in India through a system that's been built out, uh, which is part of India Stack, and uh, and that's the most recent. Uh, portion of India stack and it's growing very rapidly, but it's not got the same scale that payments and and digital identity have. So when you take all of these three things, uh, then that collection is called India stack. The way to think about benefits is is that India is actually three Indias. We divide it up into India one, India two, and India three. India is about 300 million families, so these are 100 million families, the richest 100 million families, the middle 100 million families, and the poorest 100 million families. So the poorest 100 million families need government benefits. So India Stack helps those benefits move directly to the people. And so that's called direct benefits transfer. And India does this at very large scale. So it cuts out the intermediaries, and you can therefore give the benefits directly into the bank accounts. Of so back in 2013, we started off by, by looking at two deficits that we have in India. One deficit is we call it the innovation deficit. And uh, you know, at that time our thought was that we were not innovating sufficiently for India too. Uh, the second deficit is a jobs deficit. There are not enough jobs being created in India. So, so the way to address that was that, that the innovation deficit is going to be addressed by startups. But startups need something enabling that would allow them to solve a set of problems that had never been solved before. That enabling environment is created by India Stack. And so, so today you could see that uh, you can easily say that that portion of the change is actually working very well. There, hundreds and thousands of startups that are now innovating for India too. 
Why? Because they have these building blocks available. And since you have these building blocks available, you can build complex systems with small teams using combinatorial innovation. And so there were a lot of experimentation and activity that is now happening for India too, and, and meaningful companies have emerged out of that. The second deficit uh, is to do with jobs. And the thinking has been that the jobs will be created by small businesses in India just the way is the case everywhere in the world. You know, even in the U.S., most of the jobs growth happens in the small business sector. Um, so to enable the small businesses in India, you need to be able to give them credit. And uh, in India, that's also, uh, you know, not common. It's only big companies that get bank credit or get VC funding. You know, the small companies don't get either of those things. So to enable that, uh, we have been wanting to do what we call as information collateral-based lending, or you know, instead of physical collateral being used to give people a loan, can you use their information as a collateral to give them a loan? And so therefore, short tenor cash flow lending is the way this can be solved. And India Stack plays a very important role uh, in making that happen. And, and uh, in fact, there is an open network being created for enabling that, it's called OCAN, Open Credit Enablement Network. One of the most important things that we are bringing uh, out in the foreseeable future, the very near future actually, is the DPI for digital public infrastructure for AI. And uh, why is that important is because the AI economy basically relies on aggregate data sets right? I mean, if I want to build a good model, then I need lots of training data. And that training data can come from the health industry because I want to build a better system to be able to recognize tumors on an x-ray. And for that, I need lots of x-rays from, you know, many hospitals uh, to be able to train my model. Uh, and very often in this system, uh, there is a possibility of a compromise of privacy as we go forward. And some of those protections that are there, particularly here in the US, are very contractual in nature. So, so between the person who provides the training data set, who's called in our language, the training data provider, TDP, uh, relies on good behavior on part of the training data consumer, the modeler. You know why? Because they've given them an anonymized data set. And anonymized data sets increasingly can be de-anonymized. So they're hoping that they won't do that. And, uh, and if they do, there are legal consequences of making that happen. Now in India, you know, we feel that we need more protections than that, partly because we don't have a legal system which enforces the contractual law as quickly as it should. Uh, furthermore, you know, it doesn't do a very good job of punitive damages, uh, you know, and tends to regard them as principally unfair. So we needed to find a way to make, we enable this kind of innovation, and at the same time, uh, you know, protect in the Indian context the privacy of the individuals that are there. So we built a digital public infrastructure for that, and that involves confidential computing, it involves differential privacy and electronic contracts, and all this is going to roll out in the in the coming weeks and, and months. and. Uh, and we know, you know, there's a lot of interest from other nations to simultaneously kind of uh, launch this in their own countries. Uh, some of them are European in nature. The, the, we have a good working relationship with France uh, on this. And some of them um, are in Asia, notably Japan.